Uh, you are mute. He's got. You are mute. There we go. Yeah, coach. Congratulations, first of all. That was a great win. Um, what do you think the guys showed tonight? What What do you think they proved? Um, he showed a, a lot of toughness. You know, they say uh, offense sells tickets and defense wins games, but rebounding wins championships. And we, this is the first time that we've out rebounded the team on both offensive and defensive uh, rebounds. And, uh, you know, I thought, uh, I mean, they were a really good offensive team and they were in a rhythm in the second half. It was the first time in the second half that our defense was better in the second half than the first. And it was away from our bench. So, so we grew up some there talking to each other and, uh, you know, so it's, um, I, I'm so proud of, of the guys and their resilience, their fight, their toughness. What can you just say about Marquise's performance tonight? Oh man, special. Only the fifth time in school history, uh, 2010 game. And, uh, um, you know, just the big plays after big plays, you know, big time players make big time plays and big time moments. And, that was a big time moment for us, and, and he stepped up, and his team trusted. I'm sorry, you got you got cut off. I said, uh, you know, big time players make big time plays and big time moments, and that was a big time moment for us. And he stepped up, and made those plays, and his team trusted. And what kind of duo can he be with uh, Keontae? They just seem like a pretty good one-two punch right now. Yeah, you know, um, they were a great one-two punch tonight. You know, and uh, I've said all along, my goal is that every night we have a different person, you know, who you guys are asking me these same type of questions about. And that way teams can't just lock in on a couple guys. But, you know, somebody must have said something to him about being from New York or something because he was on one. Like, I mean, it, it, it was, it was kind of cool. Thanks. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, Michael. Yeah, Coach, dang, the last play of regulation. What are you trying to get out of that? I, and we work on it every day in practice, you know, um, in the game situation. And, you know, we want a high ball screen, get Marquise going downhill, have guys crash in the glass and uh, give him an option to either make a shot or make a play for somebody else. And, um, you know, I, I, I liked our poise in that moment, and we were prepared for it. Is your preference to get a shot on the interior in that situation? Yeah, we want to live in the paint. And, I, I you know, in the first half, uh, we had uh, 16 possessions where we got a paint touch, and we had a 1.9 OER. And then when we didn't get a paint touch, there were seven of them that we didn't get a paint touch. We had a zero OER. And so in the second half, Every time we touch the paint, something good happened. And when, in overtime, five to grind, last five minutes of the game, uh, you know, teams that win, they, they get paint touches. And so um, it's something that we, we preach as a program and, and the guys execute it tonight. Thank you, Coach. Okay, go ahead, Kellis. Hey, Jerome, congrats on the win. Uh, how much did you find yourself drawing up plays, and dictating things to the sideline versus trusting the guys to just go out and win it uh, as the game went on. Now, you know, um, we, we, we had a couple of things, but we stuck to some stuff that we had been running and just put them in position to make plays. Uh, you know, they, they, they did a good job of starting to trap Marquise on some ball screens. And so then we took him off the ball and let him be a fill guy and let some other guys attack the paint. But, you know, um, Keontae was going, uh, Keith was going, they, they couldn't stop us. They, they were in foul trouble. We were in a double bonus. So we were gonna try and isolate um, who we thought we had an advantage with and, you know, make them have to guard us. And so I thought the guys execute that well. When you think back to uh, when you first started coaching Marquise, how do you think he's improved the most from, you know, this summer to right now? Uh, he's uh, his poise. You know, um, it's it's uh, he's learning how to um, stick to his habits in, in crucial situations uh, rather than like making stuff up. And so um, and and it's easy to see it when he's making stuff up, and it's easy to see when he's operating within what we want to do. And so there have been more moments tonight. There were more moments tonight where he stuck with what we wanted to do, uh, rather than him making up his own stuff. 
All right. Thanks, Coach. Good luck tomorrow. Hey, thanks a lot, Kels. Appreciate you. Okay, go ahead, Cole. Hey, Coach. Yeah, uh, Kels kind of took my question, but when we talked at Big 12 Media Days, you talked about the difference between Marquise being a lion and being a tiger. How did you feel like he was in that aspect? Tonight? Well, you know, um, throughout the course of the game, I thought he was a lion and he was with this group and, you know, he got people the ball. But when we got to the end of regulation and overtime, it was time for him to be a tiger and go eat what he kills. And uh, he did a great job. And then I, I was curious if you could talk a little bit about David. Um, I know you got a little bit of foul trouble last night, but just how important has he been these last two games for you guys? But man, David has been huge the last, especially the day. I mean, he picked up the two early fouls, so he didn't get to play a lot in the first half. And um, But in the second half, you know, his rim running, his ball screen roll, his ability to switch on, on ball screens and guard perimeter guys, uh, came up with some big rebounds down the stretch, block shot. David was huge. He was huge for us. And, uh, I mean, when he, you know, they denied everyone. He took the big fella from the top of the key and went to the rack. And and he can do that. I mean, that's that that's an advantage for us. And looking to see him do that more, we need to put him in more situations where he can do that. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Cole. Uh, go ahead, Tim. There we go. Um, uh, last night you talked about how you, this team, the biggest thing that you guys have to improve on is, is learning each other on the court in, in situations like these and, and, and in new situations that you guys haven't been in. How, how big is that for that process to occur? Yeah, no. Um, well, first of all, Nevada is a really good basketball team, right? They, they are, they, they could be an NCAA tournament team, right? And so um, we learned a lot about what happens when teams go on runs on this and how are we going to handle it? Do we understand that it's a game of runs and we're going to make a run? That, that was huge. And um, trusting each other on defense and figuring out, you know, where we can pick on people on offense. That's, that's just all part of it. But you got to do it in close games like this in order to be able to really grow. And so, I mean, uh, we, we are heading in the right direction. Uh, we, got a, we got a ways to go, but we're heading in the right direction. And then I know last night you said that you guys already had the had the scout done on on Nevada. Is the same true of, of LSU? And if so, what, yeah, what can you, yeah. About you know the, the, the scouts done. It's this is uh, I mean this is not going to be a, a scout game. This is this is a toughness game. It's uh, you know we're going both teams going to have to quick turn around and recover and uh, come out tomorrow and rely on your habits. Uh, pretty much like like tonight, you know, rely on your habits and. They're gonna well, they're gonna run some stuff that we're not gonna be prepared for, and and we we want our habits to take over that that we've worked on all summer long and uh, since the start of the season, and um, and you know it just you know the toughest team is gonna win. Thanks, Jerome. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Uh, Arnie. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about the. Uh, I think the charge that uh, Keontae took there on uh, uh, Will Baker. Baker to get him out of the game. How how big was that? To... Man, huge, right? Huge. We, we that's something that we practice every day. Also, you you, you know you fight the post, and then you, you know he bumps you one time, and then you know you you hold your ground, and on the second bump, if he goes through you, you go down. And I mean, it it, it was a huge play for us and so then it, it guys will make him plays on both ends of the court and uh, real real problem and uh you talked about the five to grind the first five uh at the end of the regulation it didn't go as well but it, it seemed like you handled it better the the second time was it nice to get a, a second hit there yeah you know and if i mean you don't once again it's always better to learn wins you enjoy that a lot more uh, but the, the, there's a lot to be learned about what we did in the first, the last five minutes of the game, because we took a lead in the last five minutes and then we gave it back. And so what can we take away from that, whether it was dumb fouls or 
you know, allowing the ball to get to the paint or us not getting it to the paint and taking tough ones, you know. So we're going to look at that five minutes and figure out what we can learn from it. But, you know, in the, the, the overtime, you know, I just thought like the toughest, uh, you know, we say this all the time, toughest team is going to win and, and we were a tougher team tonight. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, D. Scott, go ahead. I think you had one more. You're right. still on mute. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was curious if you could uh, maybe um, talk a little bit about uh, the Kansas State fans. The sandstorm was playing during your timeout. I heard that, and you know the fans are kind of going crazy. Just give me your thoughts on the K State fans there at the Cayman Islands. Man, our fans have been incredible, and and, and you know when this goes, I I, I hope. One of our things, right, as, and I'm going to talk about the fans in a second, but as a program, we're going to play in Thanksgiving tournaments so that Christmas, our guys can go home for Christmas break. Okay, that that's one of the things that's important to me, that they get to be with their families for Christmas. And for Thanksgiving, we're going to pick tournaments on, on the islands, right? So I, I want our fans to start saving up and putting it on their calendar and stuff because we got a great crowd here tonight. They were unbelievable. I didn't hear Sandstorm. I, I really could. I was locked in on the game, but you could hear them cheer. And like, I mean, everyone around has said we've had the best fans here. And so uh, we, we need more. Like we, we want to we wanna take this show on the road and, and have a great time for Thanksgiving. So I want to invite everybody, Manhattan, you know, let's to, to, to come on in Kansas City and wherever you're at, let, 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 let's meet up on the islands uh, next Thanksgiving, and it's going to be in the Bahamas, and uh, we're, we're going to have a great time. Thank you so much. Thank you for that question. Arnie, did you have something else? Sorry, no, I just didn't lower my hand. Okay, thanks, no problem. Uh, Coach, I think that's everything. Hey, Thank thanks, you. fellas. Go Cats.